So this afternoon, the president addressed the people of Ghana. We have a last video that we'll show you. Uh, so we have extracted some text from what he said. He was speaking on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of the referendum that brought into power the, or brought into being the 1992 constitution. Now, the referendum is the way we go uh, for those of our younger viewers. What, what happens is that we in Ghana have had a, a tragedy about sustaining a constitutional arrangement. So when the British gave independence, we, we, sort of, uh, we set up a new constitution. Then when the British were here, they did, we didn't have a constitution. We operated like it is in Britain. We had what we call parliamentary supremacy. We have a political arrangement that gave us parliamentary supremacy. So we had a parliament and a prime minister. And the, the president, the executive, the non-executive president was always the queen. So that's, how, that's what we inherited. So at the beginning, our prime minister was Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who was a member of parliament himself. He held a seat in Parliament, and uh, his party won majority of the seats in Parliament in the first election in 1951, uh, and then they won elections again in 1954. Elections were won again by the CPP in 1956, uh, parliamentary elections. And then in 1960, we decided that we didn't want the British situation anymore. We wanted the American situation where we have a constitution and a president who retains the two most significant powers any president has, the ceremonial authority of the president and then the executive authority of the president. So we start, set up that in 1960. We called it the First Republic. That was why 1st July was Republic Day. That was the first republic. The constitution ran until 1966, and it was overthrown for all sorts of reasons. We don't want to go back to that tonight. And so the, when the constitution is overthrown, the military came in, and then the conversation started that returned the country to constitutional rule. So what did they do? They sat down to write another constitution, pick lessons from the first constitution, and also make changes uh, about those things that people were complaining about. So that's how the second republic started, and that came up in 1969. Uh, so what happens is, a consultative assembly, that's what they call it, a group of eminent men and women uh, sit together and draft a constitution. Article 1 will be this, Article 2 will be this. That's the, they set out the superstructure of what will control our country. That's what constitutions mean. Okay? So when they do that, we have to, as a Ghanaian people, go to what we call a referendum. It's like a vote. We are voting whether we like the constitution or we don't like the constitution. If we turn up to vote that we don't like the constitution, those aspects must write the constitution, another constitution for us. So in 1969, the referendum occurred and we voted that we like the constitution. Before long, though, that constitution was also overthrown by the military. Kutu Achampon did that in uh, 13 January 1972. And so the pressure came on him that returned the country to constitutional rule. That didn't happen until 1979. So once again, the process was repeated. Consultative assembly people sit down and write the constitution of eminent men and women. Then when they write the constitution, we do a referendum uh, to decide whether we like this constitution or not. So it's a vote of sorts that occurs. So that also occurred in 1979. The referendum said, yes, we like the constitution. The constitution was implemented in, in, December, in September 1979. Unfortunately, that was also overthrown in 1981. So come 1992, now we were going to do that for the fourth time. So it was a lot of conversation around how do we do it to make sure that it is sustained over the years because all the first uh, other constitutions had been overthrown. Okay, so experts sat down, put the stuff together, wrote it out, and then on the 28th of April, 30 years ago today, Ghanaians voted to decide whether the 1992 constitution is the one we want to operate as our superstructure. And we have always believed uh, that if we deal with the superstructure, everything else will follow. That's why we have uh, decided to be per journalists covering politics. Because once the politics is fixed, uh, a lot of the things will be fixed. Otherwise, we keep talking about the things we talk about. If we don't do the philosophical analysis to deal with the superstructure, why do we have corruption? Why do we have a state organization that works this way? Why do we have that? All of those things will be found in the superstructure. We, the difference between us and America is that they have a superstructure that has gone through a lot of thinking processes. So we have to think through it. And we, we don't have to solve micro problems. There, some road has not been done. Some hospital has been abandoned. Some, those are micro, micro problems that don't take us anywhere. It just shows that we are not big thinkers and we don't know how to develop a society. Because developing a society is not about solving micro problems. No. Developing a society is about dealing with the superstructure and decide that in this society, these are the rules that will operate. Even before those who will operate a society are born, even before the Americans were born, George Washington and the six founding fathers had determined how the state should go, raising potential questions and dealing with them. That if somebody wants to do this and we don't want him to do it, how do we put it in the law? So all of those things are fixed. That's why we think that the solution to any 
problem that we have, and we have a lot of uh, great stories from 30 years of operating a constitution. That's a fantastic story for an African country in the 21st century. There's no doubt about that. The president said a bit of that. But if we want to go forward and change our society, it has to be thinking through what should change in the constitution. I believe that's the only thing we should be doing. Rather than checking payroll, finding those are micro, micro issues. You solve that, it will not change because the superstructure that is um, begotten all of those things has not changed. If you don't change it, but that requires a lot of thinking. Changing the superstructure requires a lot of thinking, bringing men and women together to think. And so the president has made one suggestion. He thinks to be able to solve our problem, let's fix Article 55. Other people have said this evening, I've heard on radio, people talk about uh, Article 71. People have talked about Article 58. I think that's a good conversation that must go on. So we can look at some of the micro issues, but that's not where the solution is. The solution is to deal with the superstructure. So what did the president say? He said as follows. He said, we began our life with independence in a multi-party democracy, which changed into one-party rule. Three out of five coup d'etats in our history resulted in the overthrow of three civilian governments. Two of the coups removed military government, and there was strong resistance to the idea of a formation of a so-called union government in Ghana. He goes on to say, several attempts to take Ghana down the path of multi-party democracy were met in some quarters with stiff opposition and some equal responses. Those who would rather have authoritarian rule, force down the citizenry, claimed that Ghana was underdeveloped and had to get things done in a hurry. They claimed that democracy was cumbersome and would divide Ghanaians along tribal lines. However, the will was widespread and unanimous to have the decade-long ban on political activities imposed in 1981 lifted and a return to multi-party democracy established. The Ghanaian people wanted to live in freedom where there was respect for individual liberties, human rights, and the principles of democratic accountability. It says, uh, President continued, the Provisional National Defense Council, PNDC, in power since 31st of December 1981, set up the National Consultative Assembly in May 1991 and asked the body to prepare a draft constitution. Ghanaians went to the polls in a referendum to make a decision uh, with which we, the current and future generations, are beneficiaries. The president continues, still talking about history, it says 3,408,119 Ghanaians voted yes in favor of the referendum, representing 92.59% of the vote to return our nation to democratic rule, as opposed to 272,855 voting uh, no voting no, representing a 7.41%. The constitution overwhelmingly approved in the referendum set up a liberal democratic state founded on the separation of powers with the, exclusion, with the exclusive power in the judiciary to enforce the constitution and protect fundamental rights of the citizenry. The constitution was promulgated with immense popular backing and on the 7th of January 1993, and His Excellency Jerry John Rawlins, the chairman of the SYP NDC, was sworn in as the first president of the Fourth Republic. We have, over the last 30 years, witnessed sustained growth across every facet of national life. There have been improvements in every part of the Human Development Index. Simply put, democracy has been good for us. Today, democracy, equality of opportunity and respect for human rights, the rule of law, ideas which have stood the test of time around the world, have stood firm in our body politic. We, the president said, have had five presidents in the history of the Fourth Republic with peaceful transfers of power from a government to an opposition party on three separate occasions. Even when there were disagreements on the outcome of an election, it was the Supreme Court on two occasions, rather than the streets, that validated the results. We are, arguably, the most stable democracy in West Africa. The president continues on a theme that we call vigilance. There are some who for their own parochial and selfish interest want to see a return to the dark days of authoritarian rule simply because they would want their views to be subject to the open scrutiny of the Ghanaian people. Simply because they will not want their views, their views to be subject to the open scrutiny of the Ghanaian people. Or if their positions are put before the Ghanaian people, they shall be rejected. Let us strengthen our resolve to resist such persons for our own good. Okay, he goes on. Our primary goal of the constitution of Ghana was to decentralize power so that governance shall be brought closer to the people. 
One fundamental barrier to the realization of this goal has to do with the ramifications of Article 55.3 of the Constitution, which currently bars political parties' involvement in district assembly elections. I'll end on this one because we do have a video on that. I'll show you the video of the president expressing his most passionate aspect of, of constitutional reform. Uh, he thinks that the constitution has worked well, we should keep it as it is, but he wants an, an amendment to Article 55. There are those who also want amendments, and I'm thinking that there has to be a sort of committee set together from the presidency where they are looking at potential constitutional amendments. He's talking about Article 55. He's already talked about it since 2018, and he says that he's going to achieve consensus to be able to bring it back so that political parties can run uh, the show at the district assembly elections. We support that for the simple reason that it will break the chain of the winner takes all. The winner takes all is killing our society. Now, these are some of the things I'm talking about. The superstructure, you have to break the winner takes all. So political parties have activities to run. It reduces the tension in elections. It allows people to grow into leadership. It allows political parties to show on a micro level what they can do with a district and with a region. All of those things are important for the growth of our democracy. We don't have that in Ghana. We don't have that because the constitution was created for a dictator. We have said that without any apology. We continue to say it. And all most of the articles under the presidency, the chapter of the presidency in the constitution, will show you that the presidency is being created into a dictator. I admire President Akufado because it's a power that he has. He has the power. Even in 2018, he had the power to appoint a lot of people. To, the power to appoint is one of the... the uh, important authorities in the hands of the president. That's the power to appoint. And he was saying that, I have the power to appoint, but I don't want it. I think if you have a president who says, I don't want to continue to exercise this power given to me under the constitution, I want Ghanaians to make that decision, I thought that would be a decision that should be applauded. But nonetheless, he says he's going to continue to achieve consensus uh, with that one. So let me go and begin the historical uh, memory lane with you. The first video I'm going to show you uh, it's a news item. I have to apologize that it's an old video, so the sound uh, might be problematic. Some of the pictures are also jumping a little bit. But uh, uh, with that apology said, have a look at it. It's an old video of uh, an announcement that the Interim National Electoral Commission has been formed and that they will register political parties. Have a look. Okay, so the Constitution should be taken to a referendum for acceptance or rejection by all guardians. An 11 member interim electoral commission was appointed with Mr. Justice Josiah Furibwatin as chairman to organize the referendum as well as the presidential and parliamentary elections. With the formation of ENEC, the National Commission for Democracy ceased to be the body responsible for elections and is now only responsible for civic education. The body was reconstituted and Nanaj Mabedi, a monthly of the Man traditional area, replaced Justice D.F. Annan as chairman. The referendum on the constitution was held on 28th April. The turnout was good and balloting was generally smooth and peaceful throughout the country. Not every potential voter was lucky though. Some registered voters, including a member of the PNDC, Dr. Mary Grant, could not find their names and could not vote. But the problems were relatively minor and the ENEC promised to work on them. The result of the referendum itself was a massive yes vote in favor of the constitution, paving the way for the lifting of the ban on political activities. So that was, uh, I hope you sort of got the sound. You saw Fly Lepson Rollins there voting in the referendum of 30 years ago. That event occurred on 28th April 1992. Uh, but soon after that, there was a court case. In those days, there, were, there was a lot of mistrust between Flight Lieutenant Rollins, the military junta, converting himself into civilian authority, and the, uh, if you like, uh, career politicians. There was a lot of mistrust between them. So the, a rule was made, and we will understand why the rule was made when we hear Obeda Samar talking. A rule was made that now that we are setting up a fourth republic and we are setting up new political parties, political parties cannot use the names of old political parties. So no political party could be set up as CPP. No political party could be set up as Progress Party, PP. No political party could be set up as PFP, UNC, PNP. Any political party that had an old tradition with an old name, was, uh, there was a ban imposed for, on the new system that you cannot have a political party called the CPP. So court cases had to be, to, to be done. Uh, court cases had to be discharged 
to get what we have today, where the CPP calls itself the CPP. So what all of these political parties did was, if you are Progress Party and PFP, and then you are NPP, then you find new patriotic party so that the PP is sounding in the thing, something like that, you know. So that was, that was the, the first matter. But as someone will tell us why, why the PNDC took that decision. Uh, but now, let's hear the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation news report on the court case where the uh, 28 of the old politicians filed a writ at the Accra High Court in, in the High Court challenging the constitutionality of the rule that you cannot use old political party names because they said it offended the constitutional provision on freedom of association. Very important. Let's hear how the courts ruled on that. Back to 1992. The government passed the political parties law to regulate the activities of political parties when the ban was lifted. But three days before the day the ban was to be lifted, on 18th May, Mr. K. A. Bedema and 28 others filed an application of interim injunction at an Accra High Court seeking to restrain ANIC from operating the political party's law. The plaintiffs claimed, among other things, that the ban on the use of particular names or political parties was an infringement on the individual's right of action. We also sought an order of perpetual injunction to restrain the ANIC from registering any political party under the 1992 political party's law. The courtroom was packed by supporters of the applicants as well as supporters of government at every sitting and police had to be brought in to control the crowd outside the courtroom. The presiding judge, Mr. Justice K. Quidwampinson, tried to have the parties settle this matter out of court, but this failed. When the case came back to the court, the judge struck it out for want of jurisdiction. He said, under PNDC Law 42, it is only the Supreme Court that has jurisdiction over matters arising out of fundamental human rights. With the court case over, the way is not clear for the parties to take off. Many of them had already started operating as social clubs with one political philosophy or the other. Meanwhile, Ene headed to the numerous calls to reopen the voters register by revising the register for a two-week period. Ene claimed that a total re-registration of voters will not only draw the political agenda backwards, but it will also cost the country millions of both local and foreign currency. Probably because of the stringent demands of the political parties' law, the parties appeared to be slow in taking off. It was almost one month after the ban was lifted before a group filed the first application to register as a party. But towards the end of July and early August, the scene had started warming up and from then on to the presidential elections, it was all fireworks. Eight major parties registered with the ENEC to operate political parties. All the eight received their final registration certificates in July and the first half of August, which enabled them to operate as political parties. So that was the story of, uh, so the, the, let's get back to the court case so that we can explain. Political parties went to court and said, 
the interim national electoral commission does not want us to use old names and it's a violation of the constitution freedom of association the high court judge said that he has no jurisdiction over the matter because he said under the constitution is the supreme court that has original jurisdiction for constitutional interpretation since then the rule has changed the high court now do have original jurisdiction on all matters of human rights they do have original jurisdiction in all matters of human rights but at that time uh, in, in this case the High Court judge ruled that he has no jury. That's Nana Kofad on your screen there. Uh, lawyering for the, uh, that's uh, Bedema, the first finance minister in suits just passed. Uh, he was uh, leading Darocha, Eskin, and Kwame Safwe do in your picture now. This is the judge of the day who ruled and said that he has no jurisdiction in the matter. Counsel for the plaintiffs, Nana Dodanko Kufado, arguing before the court uh, together, I believe, with Gloria Kufa, Kotoampa, and others, uh, T.D. Brodiments. That's 1992, 30 years ago. It's a very long time. Martin Amidu. Uh, for the state, and this is the judge, Martin Amidu, Deputy Attorney General for the state, particularly J Jacob Bitcher, Belamte, over there in your shot, uh, sitting at the back, General Eskin, Janice Selby behind him, uh, some of the stalwarts. Can't remember this one, but this is BJ Darocha, of course, uh, in the spectacles there, un un unforgettable image of Mr. Darocha. This is one whose name I've forgotten, I have to say, but that was the Supreme Court building in Accra. Uh, this room has hosted many, many, many trials. And this was the significant history of what happened 30 years ago. Now, let's talk about Obed Asamoah. And, um, so it wasn't until 2016 when we were doing a documentary uh, that we called The Voices of Political Campaign that we sort of understood why the decision was taken then that people cannot use the names of old political parties. Obed Asamoah and the uh, brains behind the formation of the NDC felt that the, the different political parties all had their own tradition. If you allow them to pick back their tradition, you will not get the operation on the ground. So first of all, don't allow them to pick back their tradition in terms of their names. Number two, delay the, the, ban, the lifting of the ban on political parties until the NDC had formed their party on the ground. This is what Obeda Samoa told us, a full confession of why the things happened in 1992 happened. Here is Obeda Samoa talking to us in 2016. There was an argument within the PNDC as to whether we could just turn the country to constitutional rule or whether the PNDC should promote a political party. And I was one of the uh, <clears throat> advocates of the PNDC for promoting a political party. I'd always been against the idea of the military by themselves ruling. I advocated very strongly that we should try and set up a, a political party which would promote the values of the PNDC. I said it's not enough just to get, get out of uh, office. You know, we should, if you believe in what you are doing and you believe that those values were worth uh, 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 continuing, then we should set up a party that will continue those values. You see, eventually, eventually it was agreed upon. So we started working. And again, I advised my colleagues, I said, look, the PPA had been there, they have a tradition. The CPP have been there, they have a tradition. They have a network. We don't have any. So let us set up a network before we lift the ban. <laughs> You see, so at the time where, so they said, okay, you, 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 it's your idea. You go and set up the network. So I led with the foundation for the party before we, before the ban of political parties was lifted. So when it was lifted, we were ready to go. Yes, so you now know the story and what are the truth of the matter. They decided to delay the lifting of the ban on political parties so that the NDC would get significant grounding. Uh, before they will leave the band. They did, and they won the 1992 elections and won the 1996 elections. And since then, the NDC has been a significant force, um, a formidable uh, political force in the uh, processes of Ghana's politics of the Fourth Republic. But this is the genesis. I thought that is just, uh, it, it, it's, it's good to, on an occasion like this 30 years ago, remind ourselves of who were the first presidential candidates um, in that 1992 election. We're going to roll them out person by person, uh, voice by voice. We begin with the presidential candidate of the new patriotic party at the time, Professor Albert Edubwahing. What I would like to see the month of August and September with the month of party congresses to elect their presidential candidates. I do hereby humbly launch an appeal to Dr. Akwaji, Reverend F.K.D. Joker, Monsieur Stafford, thank you, thank you. 
Lorenz Adagani, and Julio Edel, to see themselves into a body, to go into the building with a zero to be my group. No sweet promises to make, but I can assure you of leadership, of integrity. I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, of a lot of hard work, but at the end of the day, what we want for our people through the elections, the presidential and parliamentary elections, is not power, it's not a throne. We want nothing more than social economic justice. I believe that with your collective and individual cooperation, I shall face up to the task which you have now called upon me to undertake. Mr. President, our candidate, I would make sure that our great party is provided with the required leadership, which is prepared with the nation and work. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to also had his message. The joy that I experience is not on account of my nomination, but because at long last I have been offered a unique opportunity to continue the good policies of. of